Welcome to a special edition of Greenberg News. We're bringing people, we, we brought down one of the, the shining lights of Broadway. Natasha Martin, I'm, and I'm figuring, what the hell is going on up in New York? It's like a whole other city or something. And I figured, now you, Natasha, you have about six careers, and I assume that's the norm. I'm understanding New York, because you can't survive on four. Yes. You know, how yes. does anybody... Let's talk about the cost of living up there. You need yeah. at least like $200,000 a year to, to survive in New York if adequately. Yeah, I think I mean, so. that just covered most of your bills. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you, want, if you want to eat like a balanced diet, you know, uh, I think six careers is, is now the new black. You know, surviving New York is just, it's, it's oh. amazing. Oh, it's amazing. You know, I see How do you it, handle the stress every day? It must be like, it is, you wake up saying, I need $1,000 to live today, and I'm only making $300, so... I think the key is, uh, is, is to hustle. I think that's really the key. You know, I, try, I try to line up things, you know, ahead of time for the year, uh, creatively, and right. even my students, when I, when I go into class and I teach, you know, I have to keep tell, reminding them, you know, to, uh, to breathe. You know, they stop breathe. breathing, because, really? they, well, they're used to technology breathing for them, you know, right. so to remind them, just, just breathe right now, and... Uh, they got it. You know, I tell them all the time, if you can find anything else that you you're good at you know to I do that phrase right literally. literally i think that they they get you know excited about certain things right you know i try to i try to really <laughs> i i try to stay uh, up to speed on my you know my um topical references and pop culture yes. references and you know i try to I'm, i mean i you know i make it a point to to try to incorporate some of that into the dialogue because you know then that it tends to uh, get their attention but i think when it comes to what i'm you know the material i'm presenting you know a, a lot of them are just really in, intrigued about what it is we do as performers you know and and they what is it you do and, and I, you know i'm you know i actually i have a bigger picture because you're, you're sure you're, yeah. you're, you're, a, you're a working yeah. not that way. <laughs> you're a working <laughs> actress among a producer director and all these things i'm always curious about those who quote we see on tv the successful ones mm-hmm and they'll do a show and then they'll disappear. What did, what happens to these people? Do they are they selling life insurance or I mean what are they doing with the rest of their lives? You know, it, that's that's a great question you brought up. The first person that comes to mind is uh, the actor uh, Patrick Dempsey. You yes. remember him from the '80s movies? Well, he's the, and now uh, he's on Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. He, the hunk. He's the hunk. Yeah, ever, well, you know. now he's the hunk, you know. Um, but he but, wasn't a hunky then. Oh, he, my gosh. He, that guy struggled so long. And apparently yeah. I was reading um, a piece on him. It was very, very interesting. And he talked about, I actually sent it to some of my acting students because he talked about how he had been this this pop icon in the 80s of all these really successful 80s movies. Mm-hmm. And then he his out. career just went really downhill. And he apparently continued to audition in LA and New York for years. I mean, wow. the guy just pounded pavement auditioning and auditioning. And, you know, he had, you know, a, a difficult situation personally and all this stuff. And what then happened, he auditioned. I guess, you know, he just he just had some difficult relationship. You know, things just weren't going well for him. He 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 said that he auditioned for um, Grey's Anatomy. It was a pilot. And he was up against some some really well known actors at the time that were very popular, mm-hmm. and um, they called him back, and he went on several callbacks. It was a grueling process just for this pilot. You know, they didn't think it was going to turn into anything, mm. and he got it. And he talks about, you know, how um, he would go to movies. He would sit in the movie theater, and people would not recognize him anymore. They didn't know who he was. He was he gotten older. He grew up. Yeah, he'd gotten older, and you know, and uh, and he just said it was very. He was very depressed for a very long time. It was very difficult for him. He's a very, I think, so how very you, unique, how did he exist? I guess did he make enough money as a child actor to pay his I bills? guess he, no, he said he struggled. He, d- he worked, you know, different jobs, and he mm. had to actually literally go back to menial, you know, labor and things like that. And I think, uh, you know, I think that's one of the people that's really stayed true true to himself, you know, as, as, a, as a human being. So you know, it, really that's when he persevered. But how about, like, yeah. the people who were, let's say, were successful, and I can... Uh, to come off the top, but then then they disappear. What what happens to the rest of their lives? They just lay around taking drugs you know, all day. Or I what? don't know. That's a good question, Brian. It's so it's so uh, you know it's it's perplexing, especially for people that were so incredibly right. successful. And you think, oh, this person's on their way. You know, they're going to do such amazing work throughout the whole span of their of their life. Right. And then they just walk away. You know. And I think it's a very difficult uh, industry sometimes. You know, to be um, in the public. Um, 
you know, I and, you know, having people criticize you or having people um, speak about your work, you know, and it's it's a deeply personal thing, mm. I think, for some people that can't, uh, right. they, they don't have the thick skin. Oh, it's like, you know, really... like people who, like like I said, who were popular and they disappeared and like 20 years later they show up. I'm like, what did they do for those last 20 years? Yeah, what were they doing? I don't you know. know maybe they're they just really... sitting in a box? I mean, yeah. they were just waiting for someone to call? Doing like, you know, crocheting or right. crafts. And, 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 you know, and, and I just wonder how these people function. I just, I always, I always worry about their downside. Someone's got to care I, about I that. I don't know. I don't but, know. So, um, I so, hope that happens to me that I make enough, you know, that the people will say, people where was, what happened say, to like, Natasha what? when? <laughs> who's not Russian? I have a feeling that's not going to happen, but. <laughs> but. And you're not Russian, by the way. That's no, I'm taking out. my time. You're no, taking, I am not. We got I'm that, Jeff. We got, we got this. <laughs> not Russian, but, but my name means, uh, apparently, um, it, it, mean, it means it was Christmas. It named after Bullwinkle and, and Rocky No, and actually, not, not, no. no Rocky, no Moose and Squirrel. No? There was no, no connection it, there. It means Christmas child, um, but I was born in August. Of course. So it took me a long time to figure that out, but I finally figured it out. You're, uh, you're and, not part uh, of the... Your parents clearly are not procrastinators. No, they were not. They, they, That's, they were... What's the other side when you get it real early? They're, well, I think they were uh, very proactive about... Apparently. Uh, yeah, extremely about, they, about family planning. Were they hippies or something? Is that the, the deal? Were they, you know, at, were, they were, were they at Woodstock? My my dad, you know, I have to say, my my mom has since passed. She was very creative. She was a writer. She was a professor of uh, of, of law. Um, and she my, was not my, an accountant. She was not an accountant. Okay. Um, but my my father is um very creative. He he's he sings. Um, you know, he's he's um performed. You know, professionally. Um, and he's he is really very uh, you know he, he's a consultant. He owns a, a company um, uh, TCIC up in uh, the Northeast. But you know he, uh, he what kind just of company? really enjoys oh, wait, performing. Oh, wait, theater company. No, no. He actually he's a consultant for a uh, you know uh, for uh, small businesses and uh, you know goes in and, and does employee management uh, seminars and you know. Uh, different uh topics iso which i think now is maybe called called something entirely different but uh but he really enjoys being on the platform mm -hmm. uh, but you know he's quite a performer i mean i think i think my great grandfather from what i understand uh was a vaudeville performer so i think it kind of i don't know somewhere so there's, there's deep the roots here yeah. obviously there's a yeah. in your in your dna there are people who never got enough attention when they were growing up that's right <laughs> i think so bright that m must be what happened to me it, and i just like well they've continued you know, to generation after generation it started ignore, in the living room offspring that's right and, and, and just, i think my grandfather we, we used to joke that you know uh we were we were little performers. We used to put on the little, you know, performances in the kitchen and make up scenes. And you know, I think every kid does that. But uh. actually, we get a little background. We've been remiss, uh, Natasha Martin. Oh dear. Uh, who are you? Why don't you tell our listeners uh, your your uh, your seven different jobs and skill sets that you? Oh goodness, uh, do Brian. For... Thank you. You're welcome. Well. I'm a professor of theater and writing. I'm, I'm a real geek because I'm going to be touring the uh, battleground and uh, uh, Princeton. And, yeah, so I do a lot of um, of performing, uh, acting, directing in New York, and uh, and and also at the Equity Theater. Isn't performing and acting the same thing? N you know, you'd think it would be. Right. But sometimes some things you do fall into, you know, a little bit of a different category. Like performing is like singing and dancing kind of. Could be, or? yeah, could be. But was that considered not acting? Performing. Not Would always, yeah. yeah, not always, or or, or um, you know, a lot of uh, mixed mixed multimedia stuff, you know, performances involving. Right. Um, projections, different uh, modes of performing, museum, theater. There's this. There's this really great convention of museum theater mm. and i worked in it in philadelphia for a while it worked is there for, theater in yeah. philadelphia there's a company that i i worked with um that does the historical interpretation you know for like betsy ross or something yeah like the early colonial era and era and um early american colonial period so, yeah, we got it the early yeah. days yeah jefferson days. john adams yeah the happy days you know Real ben Franklin, you know. yeah, absolutely. They were cool. It was cool then. It was neat. It well, was now, neat. now let me. Now you, you performed during the. Uh, year. I actually assisted, uh, occasionally assisted the artistic director of that company. His name's Jeffrey mm -hmm. Berwind. So, and, so let me uh, ask you that when and we would we would you know you direct the uh, historical interpreters. You say you move here two steps to the right, two <laughs> steps to the back. Is make it make a face like Jefferson. Yes. That, yes. Uh, who knew what right. Jefferson's face? No, was. it was. <laughs> it was actually a, an incredibly gifted 
group of uh, performers that, that perform those uh, those figures from history, and they do years of research and work. It's amazing. Wow. Um, but what a lot of people don't know about that time is, you know, it's, it's, it's very much glorified, but it was just such a, a, a rough gritty time and he was actually writing that you know behind the stables in Philadelphia he was wafting the smell of of, of a horse manure you know all day because he was renting a room mm-hmm. you know while he was writing that that piece and well, like, what's your what's a day in a life like for Natasha day in the life well you know I usually teach at a few colleges um, and then either act in a show or direct a show or, or I'm working on some new pieces that I'm writing and so mm-hmm. I'm hoping to get those out I just submitted something to Lark which is a, a company That's in a New lark. York it's <laughs> just on a Lark <laughs> I did it on a Lark you was sure they, uh, they'll love who's that Lark Lark is a really great company in New York that produces new work so if they pick your piece they Ooh. they produce it and they provide you know support so they, they what is produ- what is production what is producing mean they put the sets together or something well if it's a new piece sometimes they just uh, provide space um, mm. to workshop it you know have a have a small production see how it does right. bring some people in to perform in it someone to direct it and they they basically how do you promote a show in New York I mean there's like three million shows going on off Broadway you know it's it's unreal at this point uh, how accessible it is to you know produce your own work, which is really great in New York. Um, is that like I an think social whole media? Is, is, whole, is that the whole really, American Idol thing that everyone wants to be a star? We all just uh, we all want their name when you know something. I think it's just become very realistic for people to buy into the fact that they can they can really do it they can really put their stuff out there and it's i think it's much easier than it than it was even you Mm. know 15 years ago 20 years ago when i was in graduate school in new york um you know it was very difficult to get i think it was much harder to get space to provide um, where'd you go to graduate school i attended two years at the Actors Studio New School program when James Lipton first um, started it. First, I'm directing a show that opens December 9th through the 11th in Space on White, which is in Tribeca, called Echoes of the Mind by Marjorie Lewitt. She's uh, written this uh, play, and she's producing this play festival, so that's going to be... So she hears voices in her head? She hears Echoes of the Mind. Actually, you know, Echoes of the Mind was... (laughs) It was a. It was an episode of uh, Magnum PI with Tom Selleck, 1984. Another guy can't act. And you know who was in it? This is, so, this is what she named her piece uh, after. Somebody was that episode? With the mind. Sharon Stone was in it. Was in a Magnum very PI. young Sharon Stone. Really? The, I had this show called Martin and Shaw. Right. It's myself and another actress, Cooper Shaw, and it's completely devised, improvised. Um, it sounded like Bernard for 50, Shaw. For 50 minutes. So that is December 12th at 6 o'clock. Bernard Shaw is dead, I think. He it? is dead. George, yeah. Good so old that's George. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. So that's at the Living Theater. The Living Theater. In New York City. Living of the Dead. Most of It's still alive. I got even better information you should put out. I have like a website so people can track down your whereabouts. Yes, it's natashaleemartin.com. Yeah, do you have one of those 24 hour cams that, like, you know. Oh, God, no. Oh, no. Oh, God. No, no. I'm not that interesting, believe me. It's okay. You know, it's I'm just... really not that interesting to, to have oh. that, but that's a great compliment. Absolutely. If you want to send me one, uh, I'll give send you my address. You, you can okay. mail it to me. I'll mail a person to you. you can, <laughs> a live, a live cam. A live cam. Man. Man. With a with a camera, a what? steady cam, and he can just follow me around and be bored out of his mind. Whatever makes you happy. Yeah, yeah. Especially, well, if he can cook, that's great. Okay. That, that's okay. Well, you and he the, can do that. Yeah. So that's cool. So we're, we, we, we so we have, no, so then we have one more. Oh, hurry up. December's, a, but December's that, a busy month. So we have, yeah, we better hurry <laughs> we up. One December. More. I'm hurrying up. We have one more, uh, yeah. December 18th and 19th, your birthday, yes, December 18th. In my honor. I'm acting in a show at Roy Arias Theater in New York City, and that is an off Broadway theater um, on 43rd. And it's called The Sugar Plum House Aww. by Liz Kimberlin. Aww. And that's a two person play. It's a new play by Liz Kimberlin. So. And with that, I think we, we have run out of time. I think so. On this spe- very special holiday edition of Greenberg News. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the skunk as well, the story. I, d- I and, and it's, it, very much enjoyed it. It was from the heart. So, uh, and, that, and Natasha, I, Keep up the great work. We'll be following you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank and, you for and having me. And there's a me. shout out to Natasha. Thank you so much. Cool. And it's that been wraps up Greenberg News. Hope you enjoyed the program. See you all next week. Take care, everybody.